This is VOA News in Washington. I'm Jeff Custer. Thousands of mourners Wednesday attended the funerals of Palestinians killed in clashes during Israeli military operation in the West Bank city of Jenin. The bodies of eight Palestinians were carried through the streets with mourners chanting and carrying flags. Israel's army declared an end to the large-scale military operation in the West Bank. Associated Press correspondent Charles de Ledesma reports. Israel's withdrawn its troops from Jenin, but warns its most intense military operation in the occupied territory in nearly two decades was not a one-off. The pullout Wednesday morning ended an intense two-day operation that killed 12 Palestinians and an Israeli soldier. Residents of the Jenin refugee camp found one widespread damage after daybreak. The army claims to have inflicted heavy damage on militant groups in Jenin, but it remains unclear whether there will be any lasting effect after more than a year of heavy fighting in the West Bank. I'm Charles de Ledesma. Ukraine and Russia have been trading accusations that each side is planning to attack the Russian-held Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in southeastern Ukraine, Europe's largest such facility. Speaking to reporters Wednesday, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said Russia is taking big measures to counter what he claimed were Ukrainian efforts to sabotage the nuclear power plant. Meanwhile, in his nightly address to the nation Tuesday, Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky warned Russian troops have placed objects resembling explosives on the roof of several power units at the plant, perhaps he suggested to simulate an attack. The whole world must now realize that common security depends entirely on global attention to the actions of the occupiers at the plant. Russia must clearly realize that the world sees the scenarios terrorists are preparing for and the world is ready to respond. You'll find expanded coverage of world news and events at voanews.com 24 hours a day. This is VOA News. U.N. nuclear agency head Rafael Mariani Grossi said Wednesday he was satisfied with what he saw after touring Japan's tsunami-wrecked Fukushima Daiichi, Daiichi nuclear power plant. In a report submitted to the Japanese President Fumio Kishida, the International Atomic Energy Agency affirmed the safety of a contentious plan to release treated radioactive water into the sea. Speaking with reporters following his tour, IAEA Chief Grossi was asked what he meant when he said the effects of the water release would be negligible. This word comes exactly from the safety standards. It's not a poetic word that I invented. It's a word that comes straight from the safety standards and means that the levels are, are so far below the approved um, standards, internationally speaking, uh, there wouldn't be any such, any such effect. A massive earthquake and tsunami March 11, 2011 destroyed the plant's cooling systems, causing three reactors to melt and contaminating their cooling water, which has leaked continuously. An Australian-based Hong Kong expatriate wants, wanted on a national security charges in Hong Kong says China wants to terrorize its critics overseas into silence. Two of eight overseas-based activists wanted for national security charges are in Australia. Reporting for VOA from Sydney, Phil Mercer reports. China's foreign ministry has told Australia to stop sheltering fugitives and stop lending support for anti-China elements. Ted Huey is a former member of Hong Kong's parliament and now lives in the Australian city of Adelaide. He and seven other campaigners left the former British territory after China imposed a national security law in 2020 following pro-democracy protests. Huey told the Australian Broadcasting Corporation Wednesday the arrest warrant wouldn't affect his personal safety and was China's attempt to muzzle dissent overseas. That was Phil Mercer reporting. There have been sharks in the water off New York's Long Island, and they've been making their presence known. Associated Press correspondent Donna Warder reports. Officials say two swimmers were apparently attacked by sharks off the shores of Long Island on Tuesday, a day after two other swimmers reported being attacked. The incidents happened about 60 miles apart, including one off Fire Island Pines. On Monday, in two separate incidents, two 15-year-old girls reported being bitten on the leg. Officials say drones spotted some 50 sand sharks Tuesday morning near a popular beach park. At least one beach delayed opening and swimmers were advised to stay close to shore. State park officials have increased patrols and deployed more drones following a spate of shark attacks last year. I'm Donna Water. In Washington, I'm Jeff Custer. This is VOA News.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.